here's what uh, you guys are going to do. There's an example here in your note skeleton. Uh, and Okay, goodness sakes. There we go. Okay, so here's what you guys are going to do is using these two half reactions right here, okay, you guys are going to design a galvanic cell. You're going to figure out what the uh, the spontaneous redox reaction that will occur is. Now, I'm giving you guys both these half reactions as reduction half reactions. In a galvanic cell and in a redox reaction, can both of these things be reduction? No, no right? One has to be oxidation. So you have to decide which one of these things you guys are going to flip, okay? And so... Uh, Find the spontaneous redox reaction, balance it, draw a picture of the galvanic cell, then I'll call on victims. We'll discuss it here in just a couple of minutes. It does, because in order for the reaction to be spontaneous, what has to be true? E has to be positive. AP Chemistry. Okay, I'm going to call here on a couple of victims. First one's going to be Sabrina M. Chan, actually. So for the uh, balanced equation, uh, which of these half reactions here is going to get flipped and turned into an oxidation? Yeah, so the magnesium gets flipped, so you, magnesium solid yields Mg2 plus plus two electrons. Magnesium is oxidized. Then the sign of the potential is going to flip as well, so it'll be a positive 2.37 volts. Okay. To balance the equation, I have to multiply the half reactions. What do I multiply the top one by? That whole thing is multiplied by 2. S1 by what? By 3. So if you do that and you add it together, then you get 2 aluminum 3 plus plus 3 magnesium yields. Okay, 2 aluminum metal plus 3 Mg2 plus. Okay. Oh, that went into a parenthesis there, whatever. Okay. And then if you find the cell potential, what is the cell potential going to be, Aaron King? 0 0.71 volts. Ladies and gentlemen, when you multiply the half reactions, do you multiply the potentials? No, you do not. Okay. Now, the reason is because uh, potential is a, what they call an intensive property. It does not depend on the quantity of these things we have happening. So just like this half reaction, whether you multiply it by 1, 2, 3, 10, whatever, doesn't matter. The potential always stays the same. And so the standard potential for the cell here is going to be positive 0 0.71 volts. Is this reaction spontaneous? Yes, it is. And, and uh, we can tell that because it has a positive potential. Okay. Let me call here on somebody else. Uh, how about Roshni? Uh, what is getting oxidized in this reaction? The magnesium gets oxidized, when then by, by default, what gets reduced? Aluminum. And so, in the, and so in the reaction, there's a net transfer of electrons from the solid magnesium to the aluminum ions that are going to be in solution. Okay? So here's a spontaneous redox reaction. Let's now determine how that would look as a galvanic cell. Okay? I know I have to have the two compartments, right? And so we're going to put the anode compartment here on the left. And then on the right-hand side, we'll put the cathode compartment. Okay. Krista Mendoza, where are you? You are back there. Okay. So, uh, Krista Mendoza, here in the anode compartment, what is the half reaction that will happen over here? Okay, hang on. This is the worst. My tablet is not... Well, there we go. Is it working? Kind of. Okay. What was that again? Magnesium gets oxidized. The Mg2 plus, plus two electrons. And then at the cathode, what reaction happens? Yeah, I guess we're leaving. Okay, come back. Watch the podcast. Okay. So, uh... So those are the two half reactions. Okay, let me call here on somebody else. Uh, Morgan Williams, in the, in the left-hand compartment here, the anode compartment, what is the electrode going to be made out of? Magnesium. Okay, so here we'd have a magnesium metal electrode. 
And then the solution that we'd have in this compartment, my electrolyte solution, what would that be? Something with magnesium 2 plus ions. Okay, now commonly that would just be written as being magnesium 2 plus, but remember that uh, this has to be something containing magnesium ions and also some other counter ions. So maybe it would be like magnesium nitrate or some such thing. Okay, what would the concentration be if this is a standard cell? This would have to be present at one molar. Okay, somebody else here over on the anode side, or sorry, uh, Misa, on the cathode side. What would my electrode here be made out of? It would be made out of aluminum. Okay. And then my solution that I'd have here on this side would be what? Aluminum 3 plus and some negative ion. For the sake of convenience, let's just say that would be aluminum nitrate, whatever. It would be my source of aluminum ions in this solution. And so this would again be present at one molar concentration if this were a standard cell. Somebody else, Dolly Hernandez, what else is the cell missing? Missing a salt bridge, so some way that, uh, oh, that's the worst looking salt bridge that has ever been. Holy cow. Okay, I'd be fired if I made that salt bridge. Okay, so that allows the ions to travel back and forth, and what else? Yep, we got to connect those electrodes there by a wire. Okay, Austin Stevens, if I ask you to label on this diagram the direction of electron flow, which way would they be going? Okay, where are they produced? Produce where? Which one's the positive side? Okay, actually, this is kind of tricky. It's always produced, electrons are always produced at the anode. And it always happens that electrons produced here by oxidation, right? You guys can see that's the product of the reaction right there. So electrons always flow from the anode over to the cathode all the time. That is always the way they go. They're produced here, and then they run that direction. It is always anode to cathode all the time. Anode to cathode, always anode to cathode. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Now, if I ask a different question, like about ions going through the salt bridge, for example, okay, over here, as oxidation happens, magnesium is changed to magnesium 2 plus. So if I look at what's going on here through the salt bridge, do positive ions come that way, or do they go that way? Keep charge equalized. The positive ions go this way, right? Okay. And then my negative ions would be going that way through the salt bridge so that the charge stays equalized. Because over here on this side, remember, my aluminum ions are going to get reduced. And they're going to plate onto that electrode, and so this is over time going to get fat, okay, as aluminum gets reduced, and that means this concentration of solution is going to be going down over time. Okay. What's that? Uh, the aluminum concentration is going to go down because this gets used and it gets reduced. The magnesium concentration would increase because magnesium here gets oxidized. Okay. And uh, of course, the anode is the negative post of my you know, cell. And then over here, this is going to be positively charged. So if you guys look at a battery which has a positive negative side, the negative side is the anode where oxidation happens. The positive side is the cathode where reduction happens. That was fairly simple, right? Okay, now let's look at one that is inobvious, okay? Here's two half reactions. And I'm not going to have you guys do this with your partner. We're just going to do this together for the sake of speed, okay? So what we're going to do is for these half reactions, we're going to design a galvanic cell that incorporates them as well. And we're going to calculate their, its potential, and we're going to draw a diagram of the, uh, of the galvanic cell, okay? Now remember, do batteries actually look like what we are drawing here, these pictures? Okay, they can, like we can actually make a battery up here like, uh, you know, like that. We could with, you know, beakers and a salt bridge and whatever. That would be a battery. But, you know, usually they're, they're, they're made so as to be like housed in like these little tiny like doohickeys. But I don't know if you guys ever watch Breaking Bad. It's a terrible show, like in many ways. But uh it's uh, about using your powers for evil and everything. But there's, like, my favorite moment in this whole show is, like, the first, maybe the second season, I don't know if you guys have seen this, where they kill the trailer, like, out in the middle of nowhere, and the battery's dead, and they make a galvanic cell and wire t several together in series to start the car. It's like, yes, you could actually do that. <laughs> okay. Anyway. That's what I would do out in the middle of the desert, guys, except I wouldn't be out there doing bad things. I'd be out there chasing lizards or something and leave my headlights on or 
something. Thank okay. you. So here's the two, the two ones we're going to look at next. So here's these again, both written as reduction half reactions. So iron B, oh yeah, and one of these here has got the wrong sign. This should be a positive sign right here. I made a mistake. Oh well. Okay, that should be positive. Change that on your paper so as to avoid confusion. Let me call on the victim here, Cameron Lofi. Is he here anymore? He's gone. Okay, how about Josiah? Josiah, looking here at these two half reactions, which one of them would have to be flipped? Josiah's right there. <laughs> the first one would have to be flipped, okay? Uh, because in order, and how do you know that, Josiah? You guess. Well, that was a good guess. Okay. Let me call here on somebody else. Chris, how would you know he's gone? Okay. Okay. Has to be a positive potential. And so if you reverse this one, that'd make a negative potential. And so it's got to be the first one here that you're going to flip around. And so this guy would instead be iron metal gets oxidized to iron two plus plus two electrons. And then the potential here would be positive 0 0.44 volts, whatever. Okay. If we want to get the balanced equation for the entire reaction that happens, Ryan Lee, what are we going to multiply? Is Ryan Lee here? He's gone. Okay. How about uh, Cyrus? You're here. Cyrus, what would I multiply these half reactions by before I add them together? And then by five, because we have to have the same number of electrons produced and used in the reaction, so if we multiply this baby by two, we'll have 10 electrons uh, used, and then 10 electrons produced, and so the thing's going to balance out. If we do that all th do the multiplication added together, we're going to have two per manganate, MnO4 minus, plus uh, 16H plus, plus five iron, yields uh, two Mn2 plus, plus eight, H2O plus 5 Fe2 plus or some such thing. And then if we add the potentials together, okay, uh, Cameron Gall, what do we get for the overall cell potential? It's going to be equal to positive 2.81 volts and yeehaw. That would be the potential for the standard cell if all electrolyte concentrations were one molar. And you can be which one to flip? Because in order for the reaction to be spontaneous, it has to have a positive cell potential. If the if this reaction right here has got a potential of positive two point three seven volts, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I I I printed that totally wrong. I apologize. Okay, so let's now draw the diagram of the cell. This one is non-trivial. Okay, uh, okay. So here's what it's going to look like. We're going to have two halves, right? Here's my anode compartment. Here will be the cathode compartment. Okay. I know I'm going to have some electrode here, just like we did before, right? And we're going to have some electrolyte solution. I know over here we're going to have another electrode, and we're going to have some electrolyte solution, whatever it happens to be. I know these guys are going to be connected by a wire. I know we're going to have a salt bridge in between them. We know this much. That's always the same, right? Okay. Or I could have these guys connect in some other fashion, okay, but some way that allows electrons to flow, uh, whatever is necessary. So here's me, my anode side. Here's me, my cathode over here. Well, let me call somebody else. Christine is out here. Uh, Jared Eichbaum, what is the reaction that happens over here at the anode going to be? So iron is going to go to Fe2 plus plus two electrons, and then Jared, what's going to be the reaction over in the cathode side? Oh, goodness, okay, minus. And that's going to yield whatever, okay, the permanganate one, Mn2+, plus, and then the 4H2O or some such thing. Okay, so reduction is going to happen over here on this side, okay? Now, let me call here on somebody else. Matthew Reyes. Matthew Reyes. On this side, on the left side, 
what would you expect my electrode here is going to be made out of? Iron, yeah, because iron's with the thing getting oxidized. And so what's my electrolyte solution here going to be? Well, what iron does it have to contain? It's got to have Fe2+, right? Now, again, you can't just have a solution of, of pure Fe2+, dissolved in water, right? So this has to be dissolved there in the form of some ionic compound, like, let's just say, for the sake of argument, like ferrous nitrate or whatever, right? And this would have to be present at a concentration of one molar here on this side. On the other side, here's the tricky part, right? On the anode side, we just have one ion, iron 2 plus, right? On this side, you've got three. You've got my very poorly drawn permanganate. You've got H plus, and you've got manganese 2 plus, right? These things are all present in, the, in this half reaction, so these all have to be in my solution over here. So I'm going to have to have permanganate in some form, like maybe as potassium permanganate. I'm going to have to have H plus ions. I'm going to have to have manganese 2 plus ions all there in the solution. And if it is a standard cell, what's their concentration going to be? These all have to be there at a concentration of one molar for it to be a standard cell. Okay? Now here is the tricky part. Okay? I also got to figure out uh, what my electrode is, right? So Justin De La Rosa, what do you think we should make that electrode out of? Huh? Manganese, okay. Now here's, and, th and that's actually a good, a good idea, right? Because here you see permanganate, and then we have manganese over here. So we could make this electrode here from uh, manganese, right? But here's the thing. Do you see manganese zero anywhere here in the reaction? No, okay. And so if we put manganese zero here as my electrode, that might lead to unwanted side reactions. And so my cathode cannot be made out of pure manganese. What else could we possibly use? Platinum. You say platinum. That is correct. Okay, we could use platinum. This one here is really tricky, okay? You guys see we have these two ions, permanganate and, and manganese 2 plus, right? Can I get either one of these as a solid? Nes pa possible, right? They cannot get, okay, ions present as a solid. And so we have to have some other electrode here that is not going to react. and is not going to be part of the reaction that's just there to conduct electricity. And so we're going to use an inert electrode. What does inert mean? Does not react. Okay. And so there's a couple things you could use, but in practice, really, there's two things you could suggest. If you had to say, what kind of electrode should I use here? Uh, either platinum, okay, which is used for jewelry because it is very unreactive, or you could use carbon in the form of graphite, because that is also an, an inert electrode that is not going to react. That would also be fine, okay? But the point of that is, this just is going to conduct electricity and cause permanganate to get reduced to manganese 2 plus. So permanganate ions come over here to the electrode, they absorb electrons, they get reduced to manganese 2 plus, and yeah. Okay? And there we go. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, so for the ones in your on the homework that like involve an ion being oxidized to a higher charge state, or like one ion being reduced to something else, you use inert electrodes in each case that is like that. Uh, let me call on Anna Ryan. Anna Ryan, in this cell, which way do electrons travel? In this cell right here, which way do electrons travel? They travel from left to right because they get produced in the oxidation reaction, and so we get made over here, and they're going to travel this away, right? Electron, electron, going down here to the cathode, where they're going to be used to reduce uh, the manganese ions, or mang permanganate to manganese 2 plus. And there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, does that make sense with galvanic cells? Is that pretty simple? Okay. And so, like, uh, you know, if we'd even talked about this, like all that question five on the practice test, right? And you guys all would have got it. Okay. So that's, 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 that's easy stuff. Okay. Now, uh, here's the thing. I, didn't, I, I think I said something about this the other day, but uh, I want to make like a bigger point of like saying this right now. Uh, this cell right here has got a positive cell potential, right? It is a spontaneous reaction, right? For any spontaneous reaction, what do we know about delta G? Delta G is negative, right? So what that means is that 
as this, you know, this for this to be a spontaneous process, right? Uh, the free energy of the universe is decreasing as the reaction runs. Okay, and that's the entire driving force for what's happening right here. Every chemical reaction has a reason that it happens, right? In this case, electrons will spontaneously move from the iron electrode to the platinum electrode here and reduce these ions because uh, basically the electrons have a lower potential energy over here than they do over here. When they're at, with the iron, they have a higher potential energy. And so the whole reason that this happens, electrons being transferred, is that the system is trying to get to the lowest possible energy state, okay, to become as stable as it can possibly be. Or in other words, you could say that it is approaching equilibrium. Right now, as it's running, it is not at equilibrium and is not in the lowest possible state. As it runs, it gets closer. As it runs, as it gets closer to equilibrium, the free energy of the universe is decreasing. There's less useful work that it can possibly do. Eventually, when the system reaches the lowest energy state it can, and it achieves equilibrium, then the battery is dead. The voltage is zero. Okay? The voltage, the potential of the cell, changes with the concentration. We're going to talk about that somewhat tomorrow. But understand, okay, that as this is going, the free energy of the universe, the amount of work that this can do, decreases because the electrons and the system is achieving the lowest energy state possible. Okay? Bear this in mind. Again. Okay. Now, that's a better picture of this cell, but whatever. Okay? Now, the last thing we're going to probably have a chance to talk about today is the connection between potential and free energy. We already said there is a connection, right? But there's a mathematical relationship. It's very simple, okay? And here's what it looks like, okay? If I know the potential, I can calculate the free energy change like this. Delta G, okay? With a degree of sign, what does the degree of sign mean? Standard conditions, right? And so is equal to negative N times F times potential. Easy, right? Okay? Now here's what these things stand for. N right there is the number of moles of electrons that are transferred in the reaction. Okay? That guy right there is the cell potential. Okay? And F right here is called the Faraday constant. And it has a certain value. And I don't know... On the AP test, do they give this to you like really exactly or if they give it to you approximately? So I'm going to give it to you sort of lightweight rounded here. Okay. It looks like this. It's going to be 9.65 times 10 to the fourth power coulombs per mole of electrons. Okay. What this is basically telling you is the quantity of uh, electrical charge on one mole of electrons it's called the Faraday constant. Okay. You guys know that each electron has a really small charge, like 1.6 to the minus 19th power coulombs. That's how much charge a mole of electrons get. Okay? So free energy depends on how many electrons get transferred and the potential of the cell. Pretty simple, right? Okay. Now just to illustrate how this works, we're going to do an example. We're going to calculate the free energy change for the cell we just drew pictures of with the iron and the permanganate. Okay? Now... Going back here really quick, okay, to where we balance the equation, uh, Andy Kumpian, how many moles of electrons got transferred in this reaction? Uh, yes. That's a good question. Would we go after we multiply it? And that's and that, and that what you would do, right? So we multiply the top reaction by two, the bottom one by five. How many moles of electrons get transferred? Ten. Ten. That is correct, because like one permanganate reacts with five electrons, right? One mole of permanganate reacts with five moles of electrons. If we multiply that by two, this is going to react with 10 moles of electrons. And so that's the value of N for this cell right here, okay? So if I'm applying the formula, right, delta G is going to be equal to negative 10 moles of electrons, right, times the Faraday constant, which is 9.65 times 10 to the fourth power coulombs per mole of electrons, okay? 
and then times the potential for the cell. And the potential here was, uh, what was it again? 2.81. Okay. Now, uh, here's the thing. What's the unit there of the 2.81? Joules per coulomb, because that's what a volt is. It is a joule per coulomb. And so we want to put that out here because delta G, of course, is going to be in joules. Moles of electrons here cancels. Coulombs of charge cancels. And we're going to get a number of joules. If you guys would go through and calculate that for me, that would be swell. And Maddie's saying, tell me what you get when you get it. Oh, let's say that that's two. Two hundred and seventy. I think it's be two point seven as ten to some power. That's ten to the sixth power joules, or you could say this is going to be negative two point seven times ten to the sixth power or ten to the third power kilojoules. That's the more common unit delta G is measured in right there. Okay. So you guys can see this is going to be a spontaneous reaction, which we already knew, okay, because delta G there is negative. Now, you guys want to know something else is cool? You guys remember when we talked about free energy, how there's a connection between delta G and the value of the equilibrium constant? So we could also, using the potential, and we could find delta G, we could also find the value of K. But more on that uh, tomorrow, okay? Do you guys have any questions about that? Okay. Well, in that case, then, uh, uh, here endeth the notes, because we don't have time to go through and talk about how potential changes with concentration. That's what we would talk about tomorrow, so we're unfortunately just kind of delayed a day from what I wanted to be. So here's the plan here for the next couple days. Tomorrow, we're talking about this. Day after that, which is going to be Thursday, we're going to talk about electrolysis. Okay, we might start electrolysis tomorrow, too. Okay, we're going to talk about electrolysis on Thursday. So people who are going to be gone Thursday, at that, or actually, no, nobody misses fourth period on Thursday. Ha ha, never mind. You will all be here. Ha ha ha. Okay, so homework tonight is this right here, okay, and working on uh, the review stuff out of the review book. If you finish this, then uh, work on that here tonight. This stuff here, the assignment three, is going to be the homework for tomorrow because this kind of talks about uh, how potential depends on uh, concentration and stuff. Oh, no, 82 means extra credit. Star means extra credit. Well, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it, Ryan Lee. I mean, you know, do what you want to do. Yes. No, assignment two is getting, gra getting graded tomorrow. Assignment three is going to be due uh, on the following day. Okay, so make sure you guys get this guy done. Okay, if you finish this, you need to be reviewing. Because remember, we have nine school days between now and the AP exam. Okay, so don't freak out. Okay, but do use your time. Every day, you need to spend an hour on chemistry. Every day. I am. I should probably turn that off. You... Well, yeah, man. It, okay. <laughs>